Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's great to have you here today on this Motivation and Mindset Monday. I'm excited, as always, to start the week off right with you. And each and every week, we try to put our best self forward. That means getting out there into the world, no matter what happened last weekend, no matter what happened last week or even last month, Today's a new day and it's a new start to the week. So that is our opportunity to simply start living from our best self, from our best place. And oftentimes that means just taking one small action. What's that one thing that we can do that simply will allow us to move towards a stronger future? Now, that future doesn't necessarily come today or tomorrow, but we know that it will never come if we do not begin to be an active participant in this life. And what I want to share with you today is this, that oftentimes the thing that we want is not that far out of reach. It's honestly not. But there's a little barrier that stands between us and that thing, and that's what we call fear. And so I want to, I want to go over that a bit today. It's something that I find myself talking a lot lately to obviously my two daughters. They're young right now. There's a lot of just craziness in the world. I mean, that's just the only way to put it. We don't know what's up. We don't know what's down. We don't know uh, if this is going to last forever, if this is our new normal, whatever it might be. So there's a lot of uneasiness. And uneasiness breeds fear. And that's because when we worry about the future, it causes anxiety. And anxiety can lead to fear, right? And then what does fear lead to? Well, more anxiety. So it is this loop, and it's a perpetual loop. And I'm not saying that people are even wrong to feel that. But what happens is this. It paralyzes you. And when you are paralyzed, you don't move. That's the definition. So here's the deal, though. If you are not moving towards something, you're stuck in that quicksand. You're stuck in that mud. And nothing good comes from that position because you are not now the creator of your life. And when you stop being the creator, nothing good comes from that position. It honestly does not, because you are not allowed to take action, which means there's no growth. And if there's no growth, well, there's certainly no passion. There's no excitement. There's nothing for you to look forward to. So what I'm trying to share with a lot of people, as many people as I can, certainly my team, certainly my family, friends, is that you know this will pass. There's no doubt about that. But we can't live as if you know we don't know when it's going to. We need to start moving forward in many different areas of our life. And it doesn't mean that we need to move forward with reckless abandon. But what we have to do is start to look beyond our current situation and also understand that whatever it is, whatever goal we do set, there's going to be fear no matter what from leaving our current comfort zone. So again, when I'm trying to teach my daughters to do something new, there's two phases to this. There's two parts to it. The first one is that they might be afraid. They might be thinking they can't do it. They might get frustrated really easy. It's one thing I certainly deal with with my oldest daughter. It's like she gets frustrated. She doesn't want to do it. She, she wants to be able to do the thing. She wants to be able to accomplish it, but she doesn't want to have to deal with the frustration. And again, that's normal, right? That's normal for a kid to feel that, but that's kind of what we go through as adults as well. But as adults, we should be able to rationalize ourselves through it. But we kind of lose that power, right? We kind of lose that in ourselves, And we don't realize that there's going to be some frustration. There's going to be a little bit of anger, maybe a little bit of fear. But once we realize that that's all part of the process, that seems to go away because we expect it. Now, we don't hope for it. We don't wish for it. But we simply know that part of the creative process, part of creating the, the life that we truly want, well, is going through a few obstacles. It's almost like a little challenge, a little test to see if we're worthy. Because you know what? Not everyone is. Now, not everyone is, here's the caveat, right now in their life. Now, they could be whenever they decide to take that next step. So if I look back at my own life, I wasn't worthy many, many times. And 
when I look at that, I say, but it could have changed at any moment. All it would take was me reading the right book, meeting the right mentor, going to the right seminar, any of those things. And the reason why I say that is because I did all of those things. And once I did them and got around other people that I realized, wow, if they can do it, maybe I can as well. And all I did was do that thing that I talk about, which is suspend disbelief. So I said, if they can do it, they seem pretty normal. They seem kind of like me. Maybe I could do that too. And I answer all these questions on the weekend house calls on the podcast of people saying, I'm dealing with this autoimmune issue. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. And then in the next question, someone says, I used to deal with this autoimmune issue and now I'm recovered, right? And so I just say, listen, this person was just like you. And they're, the, they're literally the question right after you. And I'm answering this. I'm saying this right now because that was last weekend's house call. That was one person. I said, listen, I think it was actually a woman named Monique. I said, listen, if Monique can do it, then you can do it as well. And that's the truth is that there's not inside of all of us is an innate ability to move forward in our life. It's an innate ability to say, I don't love where I'm at right now in my life, but I know it could be better. You know that it can. So now what does it take? Well, it takes oftentimes doing the thing that scares you, right? So I'm back to my analogy with my daughters. It's saying like, listen, you're frightened. You've never done this before. It's brand new. Well, it's the same way as an adult. If you've never done it before, it's brand new to you, almost like you're a kid. But you know, as a kid, you're going to be able to figure it out, right? Well, why couldn't you do that as an adult? And then the other part to that, that I say with my daughters is that I have to be careful that I'm not telling them to be too careful all the time, right? So a lot of times in their life, they might be playing on the swing set or doing something crazy or standing on the swings instead of sitting on them. And I have to fight myself saying, be careful, be careful, right? Because I want what's best for them. I want to protect them. But maybe I shouldn't always just try to keep them in this safe comfort zone because what does that do? Well, like most of us, it says, stay safe, stay in the secure place, stay in your comfort zone, don't take any risks. So what I try to do now is as long as I don't think they're really going to get that badly hurt, let them take the fall, let them do those types of things only so that they can learn on their own and that I'm not always saying, be careful, be, be careful, you know, watch out. And what happens with that then is you're always getting fearful. You're always worried about what could go wrong. And I think a lot of us were told that as children as well. Like, who, right, what, what parent wouldn't say that for their child? They're looking out for the best interests of their kids. But I think it can lead into adulthood. And now, as adults, we're fearful. We're worried. We're always worried about getting hurt. We're worried about this. We're worried about that. And oftentimes, what we need to do is, is go back and talk about this on a previous Motivation and Mindset Monday. It's called fair setting. And you actually look at what is that worst case scenario? And I kind of do that with my daughters as well. It's like, well, what's the worst case? Oh, that's not bad. Okay, then let them do it. Let them try. Same with yourself. Like, what's the worst case? If it's not that bad, and, and oftentimes we make things out to be way worse than they are. If it's not that bad, try. Now, do it from an educated and do it from a knowledgeable standpoint. And that's why I go back to the books and I go back to the mentors and I go back to the seminars and certifications, all those great things. I didn't try to do things ignorantly, but I knew I needed to move forward. So when I was trying to get well, I would just try different protocols that I read in books. Some helped a little bit. Then I would relapse. Some didn't help at all. But I just tried. I tried to move forward. And yes, it was frustrating, but I was trying and I was learning along the way. And then I would go to some seminars and I would learn a whole lot more at seminars. Now, natural health seminars are kind of far and few between in terms of like your specific health-based protocols for autoimmune, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, there are a lot of seminars for fitness. There's a lot of seminars for others. And, and you can learn a lot from brilliant coaches that have been doing it 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And you say, wow, look at all the knowledge this person has. They're much older than I am. Hopefully, they've accumulated a lot more wisdom. And I can learn that wisdom so that I don't have to make all the mistakes they did and wait 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And you can start to soak that up and really absorb that. And then maybe if you are fortunate, you get to work with a mentor. You get to work with some type of coach that coaches you, whether it be virtually, whether it be through a certification, whether it be one-on-one, whatever it is. And then you start to say, oh, okay, well, there's another level to this. And I can see, wow, they made their own mistakes. And if I hope to get to that level or even somewhere close to that level, I need to maybe start making some mistakes too. Because I'll tell you this right now, that on the other side of the thing that scares you, right? On the other side of the thing that scares you is most likely the life that you're looking for. 
So if you think about the life that you want and it starts to scare you, it's not the life necessarily itself. It's the process, the evolution that you will need to go through in order to have that life or have that thing or achieve that goal. And that's the thing that holds many people back. But I'll tell you this, there's another way to look at it. It's the going through those challenges and overcoming those obstacles and doing what you need to do in order to achieve the life that you want, the one that you visualize for yourself, the one that you envision for you, that just going through those obstacles, overcoming them, overcoming the challenges allows you to draw out your best self. And that's why the challenges are there. I really believe it because you get better. Challenges and obstacles are not necessarily something to fear. They are things that you have to overcome and the act of overcoming them forces you to grow. It forces you to get better. It forces you to learn more and become more knowledgeable because you have to do things you've never done before. And because of that, you get better in almost every area of your life. And I always say, as you get better, everybody benefits. If you get more knowledgeable, how many people just say, well, I'm going to keep all this knowledge for myself? Almost no one does that. There's a human trait that once we learn something, we want to teach it to others. We want to share it in some way. When I learned, even before that, I go back to, to when I was you know, 19 years old and not 17. 17, I got sick, but I had no hope for two years. 19 years old, I meet a functional medicine practitioner. And I say, wow, in about a 60-minute consultation, they taught me more about me. They listened to me more than anybody else ever has. And I said, wow, there's a hope now. There's a possibility I may actually get well. I still don't know how, but there's possibility. And I made a promise. I remember there, and I've said this before, but I'm sitting there in the waiting area and I said this, if I ever get well, I will teach others how to do the same. Now, I said it as one of those things, not actually believing I ever would. I'll be honest with you. I didn't actually believe that yet. But I said it. I kind of threw it out there like, listen, if you help me get well, then I'll, I'll teach other people how to do it. Well, it was contagious. As I started to learn, I mean, really over the next, for, for 10 years, it's not that I wasn't trying to get well from 17 and 19, it just wasn't happening. I wouldn't meet the right people. I was still reading about nutrition and, and exercise. So I was getting better in that way, but not my overall health, right? So my body was getting better. My food intake was getting better, but my body wasn't. I still had more to learn. But for a 10-year period, and not, I mean, I didn't stop after 10 years, but what happened was is I was doing the things that I didn't want to do because I needed to get better. I needed to get well. And so it, it made me a better person. It actually transformed me. It transformed me from someone with a bad temper, who was angry, who was upset about life, and you know, who really thought that, uh, who played the victim without a doubt. There's no doubt about that. But over that time, and it didn't happen overnight, but over that time, and it will happen much faster for you, because I didn't have, again, we're talking about a time when there wasn't podcasts, there wasn't YouTube. So I wasn't able to accumulate and get around the people that I needed to get around and hear the voices inside of my head by putting in headphones, right? Listening to people like, whether it be Les Mills or Zig Ziglar or Jim Rohn or Anthony Robbins, anybody, right? I, I listen to everybody. And there used to be this company that I would listen to and I would used to buy all their, their CDs and I would just play them in my car, play them all the time. Some were on health, some were on envisioning a better life. And it was just, it was whatever it took. And I just started to reprogram my brain. And now to the point, and I know that you're going to get there and I'm not perfect by any means, but I know that you're going to get there because this is a natural evolution for all human beings is that you're going to learn a lot along this road, right? You're going to try some things, some things aren't going to work out, but you're going to accomplish goals. And I have no doubt that where you are now is probably light years ahead of where you were five years ago or 10 years ago. And so you can say, well, if I learn more, I can shorten that process by maybe 50%, by maybe 75%. Because you're going to create a formula. You're going to figure out a formula of what works. And once you know that the obstacles are there, you just say, okay, good. I look forward to them. Once the obstacle comes up, I know that I'm going to overcome it. Might not figure it out the very first time, but I realize, just like in health, there's only so many underlying root causes that are not keeping me from being well, from getting healthy, from losing the weight, from feeling energetic. There's only so many reasons. So if I continue to work the process, I'm going to figure out. 
And the faster I work the process, not haphazardly, but the quicker that I move through it without getting too down on myself, with just creating the life that I want and going through the different variable-based changes, the faster I get to my goals. And so now that is how you can begin to look at things. You can say, okay, I'm not afraid of what lies ahead because I know that I've encountered challenging times before. And I know that although those times were challenging, especially when I was in them, and I certainly wasn't enjoying them, that I made it through. And because I made it through and I'm where I am today and I'm faced with a new set of challenges, I know that I can make it through these as well. So what you need to do is just begin to realize you will draw out that best self, that person inside of you that is probably a little stronger than you believe. And there's another thing that I want to share with you though, it's this, is that if you've been kind of thinking that you need to do something in your life, that there's something that you've been kind of drawn towards, that kind of gnaws at you maybe every couple months, it kind of keeps resurfacing and resurfacing. That is the thing that you really need to begin working towards, right? It's not going away. It's a calling. Who knows exactly where that calling is coming from, right? Is it coming from God? Is it coming from the universe? Is it coming from your subconscious? Where is it coming from? regardless, because they can all be the same, is it's calling you to a better life. And it's saying, this is the thing. It may not happen tomorrow, but this is the thing that most likely is going to be a passion of yours. It's going to lead you to finding more of your purpose. We don't know exactly how yet, but as you move towards it, you'll be able to see it more clearly. And I found that so many times in my life before, that it was one step to another step. And then my, my subconscious was saying, here's the next step. And I didn't necessarily act on it, but I said, okay, I get it. I realize it's there. I'm not ready yet, but I, I hear that. I see that. Maybe I'll journal about it. I'll write it down. I'll begin to maybe formulate a plan, but I'm not there yet. But I realize, okay, that's the next step. And I want the same for you. There's almost always a next step. That's part of the growth process. And growth is is much of the time where we feel a lot of our happiness. I'll share with you, for me, happiness a lot of the time comes from growth. It's me feeling like I'm doing something to better myself. I'm doing something to better my family. I'm doing something new to better the entire community that we work with. But there's also another part of that happiness is coming from service. It's from teaching. It's from building. It's from doing things that I know will benefit another human being. And so if you're lost trying to figure out where happiness comes from, how do you create more happiness, be of more service if you can to your family, to your community, to your church or religious-based organization, to the work that you do or the work that you may begin to do. All of those things by providing service to another human almost always leads to more satisfaction in life, leads to more happiness in life. Because you know that you are doing something that is enriching the life of another human being. And there's something, I think, at 99.9% of people's being that says, I need to somehow help my fellow human. Now, again, just start with family. Start with family first, broaden from there to friends, community, then teach online, whatever it might be. So growth and service are two of the easiest ways, in my opinion, to fill your life with more purpose, more passion, more happiness. But it begins with you. Everything always begins with you. Another person can't live your life for you. They can't do the thing for you. But here's the biggest part to that. That's a great thing. Because when people do things for you, when people are basically taking care of you, sure, it feels nice. feels nice to be taken care of. But what feels even better is inner strength of being able to do those things for yourself. Now, of course, we need to take care of the people who can't take care of themselves. But what I'm sharing with you is if you're able to move forward in your life, to grow, to create, to take action, even small steps at first, that's going to allow you to live the life, to move forward towards the life that you've been envisioning, that you've been journaling about, that you've been talking about for many years now, but not doing. And It is just my belief for people that we're meant to give, we're meant for more, we're meant to always be growing, and whatever it is that you truly want, you can't have. It's one of those things that you just need to become 
the person who eventually has that thing. And the only way to become the person who gets that thing is to start embodying it. There are actions that you need to take. There are thoughts that you need to think. And there might be some type of knowledge that you need to accumulate. All of those things that you can do. You can begin to change your thoughts. You can begin to change your feelings. You can begin to take new actions. And those new actions can allow you to accumulate the knowledge that you need to do to then take the next step. Whatever it is, everything that you want in life, you are able to figure out. There is no doubt in my mind that in this day and time, you can become, you can do, you can have anything that it is. Work towards growth, work towards service of others. You will find that happiness you've been searching for. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. I truly appreciate you. And as always, if this show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe they could serve. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or a lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the equal life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests, or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs.